Chapter 1. The Theravada Path Some say Tibetan Buddhism is the practice of Mahayana Buddhism. Others say that Tibetan Buddhism is actually the practice of Vajrayana Buddhism. Really, one cannot say Tibetan Buddhism is just Mahayana or just Vajrayana Buddhism. The teachings of Dharma in Tibet are called the Three Immutables or the Threefold Vajra meaning the Dharma of Tibet has the teachings of the Theravada, the Hinayana, of the Mahayana as well as of the Vajrayana. More specifically, Tibetan Buddhism has the outer practice of the Hinayana, the inner motivation or Bodhisitta of the Mahayana, and the view and practice of the Vajrayana, known as the secret view of the Vajrayana. This is why it is necessary to study these three main levels or vehicles in Sanskrit yanas of Buddhist practice. One needs to understand that when the Buddha taught, he was not teaching as a great scholar who wanted to demonstrate a particular philosophical point of view or to teach for its own sake. His desire was to present the very essence of the deep and vast teachings of Buddhism for that reason, he gave teachings which suited the abilities of his disciples. All the teachings he gave, some long and some short, were a direct and appropriate response to the development of the disciples who came to listen to him. Of course, people have very different capacities and different levels of understanding. They also have very different wishes and desires to learn and understand the Dhamma. If the Buddha had taught only the very essence of his own understanding of those vast and far-reaching teachings, then apart from a small number of disciples who had great intelligence and diligence, few people would have ever understood the Buddhist teachings. The Buddha taught whatever would enable a person develop spiritually so he or she could progress gradually towards the very deep and vast teachings. When we analyze all the Buddhist teachings, we see that they fall into three main approaches or vehicles. The Buddhist teachings helped each student in a way appropriate for the level he or she was in. Because of that, one finds that on the relative level, each student received some benefit from what Buddha taught. On the absolute level, one finds all of the Buddhist teachings have the same goal. When one analyzes the Buddha's teachings on the relative level, one finds that there are three levels. But when one examines them from the absolute level, one sees that there is only one level or yana, because all things are directed towards the same goal.